Good morning. Welcome to Potomac United Methodist Church in Potomac, Maryland. I'm Pastor Laura. Uh, welcome to the Sunday before Thanksgiving, the last Sunday of the church year. Today is November 22nd of 2020. We are partnering as a community of faith with an organization in Montgomery County, Nourish Now, to supply food for Thanksgiving dinners this week. There's a box, you can click about that uh, lower in this, uh, the announcement of this video, and it will give you the specifics of how you can help Nourish Now um, feed some families this Thanksgiving. The other thing you will have received this past week, if you are on our mailing list, is our stewardship letter. It's an explanation of our hopes for our 2021 budget. It's an invitation to give robustly at the end of this 2020 season. And for the first time, we are going to be using uh, the letter as an opportunity to invite you to sign your pledge card online. And so I hope you'll also click that button and take a look at what that offers uh, this year and what our 2021 budget looks like. Uh, the proposed budget will not be approved until probably the second week of December, and then that'll be up on our webpage if you want the dots and tittles about that. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, and that means two things. One is that we're looking for families uh, or individuals who might be willing to receive a script and uh, light an Advent candle at home, uh, filming it uh, by way of your um, telephone camera, and then sending that in to us so that every our hope is then every Sunday of Advent to have a different family lighting the Advent candle, and then sharing a verse of a hymn. The other thing that happens beginning next Sunday is an Advent adult Bible study, and that'll be at 11 o'clock each Sunday morning during the season. And there'll be a click below at the appropriate time. That's 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. So my friends, welcome to worship. this morning to be bringing to you our gospel reading. But before I do, Shri and I want you all to know that we miss you all very much. We love you and that PUMC, you are in our daily prayers. Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, the judgment of the nations. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from the other, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, 
and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous, the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We love you. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Wasn't that just the best thing to hear Dave Edwards read the gospel lesson from Matthew this morning? Thank you, Dave. Give our love to Cherie. In Matthew's gospel, the 25th chapter marks the end of the story. 
The only thing left to tell uh, from Matthew's perspective is the deceit of Judas, the plotting of the Sanhedrin, and the death and resurrection of Christ. And to be perfectly honest, we're not going to read that part of the story together. We're not going to tell the ending of that tale until the last week of March. Now, this is the Sunday we call Reign of Christ Sunday. Next week, we're going to start the story all over again, the anticipation of the coming of God in human flesh in the season of Advent. In Matthew's Gospel, as in all four of the Gospels, Jesus, at this point in his ministry, had only been the Messiah out loud for three years. Thirty years of being in the closet, so to speak, and then three years self-proclaimed to the world. And Matthew spends his entire gospel driving home his own personal faith. And his personal faith asserted that Jesus of Nazareth is, was, will always be the long-awaited Messiah. So at the end of the 25th chapter, he delivers his bottom line. Ready? Here it is. Grace received is grace shared. That's Matthew 25, 31 through 46. What? You, you didn't hear that in the story? Well, come on with me and let's unpack it this morning. Let's acknowledge to begin with that Christians are hardwired to prefer the sheep. It's just the way we were raised. Any story, sheep and goats, we already know where we belong. We belong to the good shepherd. We are the sheep. It's okay to like the goats, but we know who we are. And so from the very beginning of this 25th chapter, uh, it's easy for this parable to go wonky. It can sound like what we call in seminary work righteousness, which is a terrible theology, because it can sound like Jesus is saying that if we want to get into heaven, we need to feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, visit those in prison. In other words, if you want a ticket into glory then you better learn how to earn it while you're here on earth. Only that's not what Jesus said. Oh, he separates the sheep from the goats, and that's ugly enough. But when he speaks to the sheep, they are surprised to discover why they're being praised. Because at some point in their lives, somebody taught them that it was important to love and to serve and to care. Someone taught them how to live faithfully because that's all they were doing. They were living faithfully Torah. See, back in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses posed a question to the people. He said, what do you think the Lord expects from you? It's Deuteronomy 10, 12. What does God expect from you? And then he answers, God expects that you will acknowledge God's presence with reverence. You'll honor God. God expects that you will follow the path where you perceive God is leading you. You will love God, serve God, obey God's commandments, and love life. I especially like that last part, love life. Oh, my friends, life is filled with hard turns, and we're going to bump our body parts against obstacles. We didn't even know we're there, and we're going to bruise. We might even walk with a limp like Jacob did after wrestling with God all night one night. And to all of that, Moses said, keep God in your sights and keep loving life. I'm going to stay in the Old Testament for another minute or two, if you'll allow me. Book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. The prophet asks the people, what does the Lord require of you? <coughs> I got all hot about that. <clears throat> and the prophet responds to act justly, to love mercy, 
and to walk humbly with God. Are you sensing a pattern here, my friends? Because there is a pattern here. Once you know God, you have to share God. Once you are forgiven, you have to forgive. And when you are loved, you got it now? I can almost hear Tracy Hoffman out loud in my congregation saying, when you are loved, you must love. All right, now jump back into Matthew with me. The sheep were living their faith. And so when Jesus separates them into glory, they are absolutely stunned. When did we see you, Lord? We didn't do that for you, Jesus. We didn't even see you. What are you talking about? And so he tells them. He tells them straight out, whatever you did to the least of these. Now stay with me now, because who's he talking about? We've made the least of these everybody and their mother. We say the least of these are the stranger, a child, the enemy, but Jesus was not that complex, dear ones. He wasn't trying to, to, to grade on a curve because he thought everybody was going to fail the test. He was pretty clear that the least of these in every generation are simply the people who cannot return the favor. They're people who can't pay you back. They're people who are going to have to give your container back empty, and we all know that that's a sin, especially in the South. The goats were equally surprised to be counted out. They too, same words, we didn't see you, Jesus. We didn't ignore you, Jesus. If we had known it was you, Jesus, we would have acted better. You've got to know we would have done a better job at welcoming and feeding and visiting. We just weren't up for it the day you came by. And in Matthew's story, it's too late. Ebenezer Scrooge has no room for redemption. See, over and over again during the course of our lives, we've been told that it's important to love and serve and care. And over and over again, there have been opportunities, or are opportunities, will be opportunities for us to behave kindly, selflessly, abundantly, over and over. Jesus whispers into the heart of our being, you are wise, you are beautiful, you are important, and you are mine. Now, I don't have any idea what the end of my life is going to look like. Like many Old Testament scholars, Matthew believed that there would be a judgment day. A day of reckoning, all lights and angels and music, and I, I, I don't know about that. I do know that today is the last day of the church year. And so today I'm going to do my best to love as deeply as I am loved. And I'm going to feed ones who cannot feed me back. And I'm going to Zoom with some folks who need a visit. And I'm going to give thanks to God for this community of faith by pledging myself uh, to the financial security of the ministries of this church. I'm going to fill out a pledge card this year, and I'm going to commit myself through the annual conference to another year of ministry among you as the pastor in this pulpit. I'm going to give thanks for Thanksgiving, and I'm going to give thanks for our ability to love one another, even in these times of shifting sand. You see how it is, don't you? Grace received is grace shared. Let us pray. It's a hard concept for us, O oh God, because from our earliest time in life, 
we uh, absorbed this ideology that the harder we work, the more we receive. The more we work, the more successful we are. There's a, there's a link inextric inextricably made in our minds that we must do in order to be rewarded. And then the church comes along with this messy ideology, this theology, this invitation to a relationship with God, with a God who says, I made you, you are mine. I redeemed you, you are mine. I forgive you, you are mine. And we think it's got to be more complicated than that. So we take a story like this one in Matthew and we twist it and we turn it and we make it sound like if the goats only did more, then there would just simply have been a flock of sheep that Jesus was speaking to. Forgive us, Lord, for trying to make it complicated. Forgive us for all of the days that we have counted ourselves among the sheep and clucked our tongues at the goats. Forgive us for the moments that we have not been gracious because to be perfectly honest, this pandemic has just put some of us down for days. It's hard to think about how we might reach out. It's hard to think about how to get out of bed. It's hard to think about how to try to vision a new life when jobs are gone from us and when people, well, people with whom we have always celebrated Thanksgiving will not be around our tables this year. So we've continued to make a mess of things, all of us, sheep and goats and children of God and people who don't even call upon God's name because we're tired of the pandemic and we're tired of being careful and so more people every day are getting this virus, and now a quarter of a million people have died. So on a day like this one, God, I'm more grateful for your kingdom in heaven than ever I have been before. And I'm more grateful at your invitation that we might be your kingdom here on earth, that there still might be opportunities for us to feed the least of these and clothe and visit and, and support. If it's just a card in the mail or a call on the phone or an email, so many opportunities, God, to just reach out and touch someone and reach out to let somebody know we need to be touched. Today, our list grows longer, and I name them one by one. Today, we pray for Mary Lou and for Anne, for Craig, Kathy, Keith, Neil, Mike, Stacy, Shwanda, Al, Carol, Mark, Marie, Fritz. We pray for everyone, O oh God, who is in need of your healing touch. We're going to pause for a moment because all across this worshiping community, somebody knows somebody. So in this moment of my silence, I invite all of you who are listening to name the ones you know who need God this morning. Gather us in, O oh God, close to your heart, so close to your heart that we hear your breath in our ears. Hold us as we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not 
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I see all over the internet right now where people are putting up their Christmas trees and singing to Christmas songs. And, and I'm excited for you if you are one who is embracing the spirit of the coming of the Christ child uh, at, at early this year in search of hope and peace and joy and love. And I invite you to come back next Sunday as we light the first candles of Advent, as we begin singing our Advent and Christmas carols, and as we begin to prepare. Because in spite of it all, Christ is coming again. Have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving. See you next Sunday.